Good morning, Las Vegas. How is everybody doing? <laughs> everybody excited for the best <laughs> session of the week? <laughs> Let's go. So um, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I assure you, you will not regret this 45 minutes of your life spent with us. Uh, my name is Sadat Malik. Uh, I'm the VP and General Manager of the Edge Computing Business at Broadcom. I'm joined today by uh, Anand Srinivas, who leads our software development organization. So together, we're going to tell you all about Edge, what's happening, what's about to happen, and why all of you should be very excited about it. So uh, without further ado, let me, let me get going, and we'll share lots of examples and ideas as we go through this. Um, there are two things that are happening which are hot in the industry today. One is AI, and the other, of course, you all know this, is Edge. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Edge and AI today. And uh, we'll share with you some ideas that we want to put out there in terms of what Edge Compute Stack, the product that we have out there, can do for Edge. All of this is part of a continuum, of course. Uh, you have the data center and the cloud that we have in this company that we bring capabilities for. We have the connectivity with SD-WAN. And now you have the Edge Compute Stack, which is a highly differentiated platform that we have built for the edge. So all three together is the narrative that you will hear from our company all through this week. So without further ado, let's get started on what we are seeing and what's happening on the edge side. So um, folks, I've been in this area, uh, in the edge area for almost over 20 years now. I, I've been around that long in at the edge, trying not to fall over. So. Um, <laughs> In my, in my early days, right, in this area, it used to be, Edge used to be kind of like an afterthought, right? Something that you put some sensors out there, you put some amount of, did some amount of data gathering so that you basically had covered your bases. Over the years, that's no longer the case. What we are seeing now is that Edge, your factory floors, your retail stores, your electrical substations, that is the new battleground for businesses. So what does that mean? So if you look at factories, right, we work very closely with auto manufacturers. In fact, I was just in a meeting with three of the largest auto manufacturers in the world, all sitting in one room, talking to each other about what we are doing for them on their factory floors. It is interesting, right, that it's no longer about just producing a car on the factory floor fast and cost effectively. It's no longer just that. It's about flexibility. Can you produce the car in a way which meets the needs of the market at that given time? Can you change your factory's configuration quickly so that if the market demands a different type of setup, a different type of paint, a different type of body, can you quickly transform your factory to make that happen? That's what is the new differentiation on the factory floor. So it's no longer about a factory floor which is kind of rigid and stuck in its hardware roots. This is now about a software-defined factory floor. And that's where the battle is taking place. That's where these manufacturers, the car manufacturers, are trying to figure out how to squeak out that edge, that slight edge over their competitors. The competition is so severe now that they are actually okay with telling each other what they're doing in their factories because they know that there is so much more going on which they don't have to share and which will provide them with a competitive edge. The collaboration is proof that these people are focusing massively at their edge environments. Retail stores are another example, right? So you think about the retail store environments and it is very evident now that our retailers, they are focused on figuring out how they can reduce theft in their stores without impacting the satisfaction of their customers. And how can they do that without driving their customers out their door and into the doors of the retailer next door? Right? That is the differentiation that they're trying to achieve. That is the competition that we're seeing at the edge. So with that in mind, right, it is very clear that our customers who we have been working for for decades, trying to help them do better running applications, implementing technology, helping them 
do life cycle management in the data, data centers, they're coming to us and they're saying, hey, all those things that you did for us at the, in the data center, we would like for you to do those things for us at the edge. Because edge is now the new battleground. So let me, let me share with you one other thing, right? This is a number, right? But I don't think that any one of us would doubt that AI right now is at the top of its hype cycle, right? Everybody's talking about it. Everybody wants to use it. Everybody wants to figure out how to use it if they haven't figured it out yet. I think the news that I'm bringing to you is that while AI is going to have a role going forward, it is really edge in AI, which is going to be the next new cycle. Why is that? While AI can do a lot of things for these businesses, the way edge brings these decisions that the AI can make close to the actual action in a retail store, for example, stopping theft before it actually happens, making sure that inventory decisions are, ba are done based on employee, employee situation in a store. Those types of decisions which are often real time, AI can make the decisions, but how fast it makes those decisions, that is critical. And Edge, doing AI at the Edge make, allows you to make that happen. So this is the fire, the battle that is being fought at the Edge. This is adding fuel to that fire. AI is adding fuel to the fire that has been started at the edge. Now the problem is, as most of you now know, yes, it is a battleground. Yes, there is a fight going on for differentiation. But this is not the fight that was fought in the data center or the cloud environments for decades. Unfortunately, it is not. I wish I could tell you that, hey, all the great things that you guys did in the data centers, in the cloud environments to differentiate yourself, your companies, you can continue to do that and you'll be successful. Unfortunately, I will not be telling you the truth. It's a different environment. It's a different paradigm. It takes things which are different from what made you successful in the data center. Lots of differences, but some of the key ones, right, that we see are these right here. Scale is one obvious one, right? I mean, when we think of scale, of course, data centers were built all for scale. Cloud was built all for scale. But this is a different type of scale. Like instead of having 10,000 servers in one data center, now you have five servers in 10,000 different geographic locations. Think about the difference. Still the same size in terms of the number of servers, but look at how they're distributed and how that changes your mindset as well as your ability to control this environment. <laughs> Very different ball game. You look at, look at the network connectivity that is. We have always assumed that in data centers, it's all connected. Well, unfortunately, that assumption is out the door here. Even if there is connectivity, even if you can assume connectivity between all the sites in an edge environment, you cannot assume the same level of connectivity all the time. Right, so again, a big difference. Edge hardware and protocols. We deal regularly in our business with protocols which are nothing like the traditional protocols that we, have, we see in the data center environment. Profinet, for example. We are implementing right now a Profinet-based environment for one of our manufacturing cust uh, customers in Germany. Very different, very different ballgame. Limited on-site personnel, right? So think about this, right? Like we have been very used to having IT people who understand, live, and breathe IT technology running these environments for us. Unfortunately, all this technology which is going to help you differentiate and win the battle at the edge, that needs to be run by people who are not IT people. They are not people who are living and breathing IT. They are people who are running stores. They are people who are painting a car on a factory floor. Expectation now is that they should be able to run this technology just as effectively as somebody who used to run a data center. Think about the paradigm shift here that we are talking about. And finally, security. Data center security 
how we had the check boxes, we got it down to a science in terms of how we control risk in a data center environment. Very different from the type of risk management that needs to happen where your outcome impact would actually bring your business down in an instant. So yes, risk management, but risk management with a hand on the throat, essentially. So all of this, right, all of these unique challenges force us to start thinking about a solution to helping our customers run applications at the edge in a different way. First of all, right, when we, our customers come to us, right, the first question that they have in mind is that, hey, um, fine, we will work with you on figuring out how to lifecycle manage, manage the applications that we deploy in these edge environments. Let's say we have 10,000 stores. The real question that uh, they have in mind when they're coming and starting this discussion with us is, how will you reduce the deployment time, which is months upon months into days and weeks? For them, this is the first question, right? Because they are used to having deployments done in one geographic location, in one environment with a set of people who are very comfortable doing these deployments day in and day out. Now you're dealing not just with geographically spread out environments, but you're dealing with people who are not used to doing these deployments the way a data center uh, crew might be needing to do. So the answer that we have brought to the table for our customers is what we call Edge Compute Stack. Edge Compute Stack, folks, is the platform that we have launched from VMware to help our customers deploy, run, and lifecycle manage applications in a pain-free manner at the edge. So you're trying to run applications so you can achieve business outcomes, right? Let's say you're a retailer. You have stores, you have 10,000 stores. You are trying to reduce theft in that stores. There's a lot of theft happening. You're trying to reduce the amount of theft. Your applications you want to run in these 10,000 stores, how do you run them in a way that even a store employee understands so they do not, do not become a bottleneck in the deployment and running of these applications? But then, how do you ensure that these applications are running at peak performance all the time? A lot of these applications, use GPUs, AI, right? How do you make sure that those very expensive GPU resources are being used effectively? The Edge Compute Stack Platform allows you to do that. In addition to that, right, that orchestration of these applications, it also provides a runtime environment that VMware is famous for, right? A runtime environment which allows you to virtualize applications across these geographic locations, as well as making sure that within a given site, you're able to uh, move resources back and forth, and optimally uh, use everything that you have in that uh, physical location. So Edge Compute Stack for us is the answer to the question that our customers are coming to us and asking. Edge is the new battleground. We understand that. We would like to find differentiation at the edge. VMware, can you help us achieve that differentiation in an easy and pain-free way? in a way that does not make us feel like we're getting into a new business altogether. This is the question that our factory store owners, our retail store owners, our substation managers, these are the people who are asking these questions, and more and more, they're getting the answers to this platform called the Edge Compute Stack. So let me, let me uh, hand this over to my colleague here who's going to go into more details of what the platform is, one of some of the new things that we're bringing. But let me end this by sharing uh, with you um, some thoughts on like what are the things that the Edge Compute Stack actually touches. So if you think of the continuum of people, process, and technology in any given business, on the people side, right, the Edge Compute Stack essentially levels the playing field. So we're the OT people, right? The people who are running the factory floor, they are at a disadvantage because of their lack of knowledge of how IT systems work. IT people do not have an understanding of often how the factory floor in this example works. So how do you level that playing field so both of them can collaborate? So it's the technology is not so difficult to operate for the OT person that they essentially are blindsided in terms of what they can do with that. And at the same time, 
make it easier for the IT person to help the OT person deploy this technology. So edge compute stack evens the playing field in that way. In terms of processes, we have seen our customers not just use this for lifecycle management, but also help them figure out from a regulatory perspective, how can they be more successful? We have customers, one of the customers that I'm thinking of right now, one of the um, uh, uh, chemist stores in Canada, they have been using this technology to essentially make sure that their regulations that they have to comply with to keep their stores up and running, they are able to comply with that, not just in terms of getting stuff done, but in terms of showing the regulators that they're successful in making it happen. And last but not least, technology, right? Edge Compute Stack checks all the, all the boxes when it comes to the five areas, right? Compute, it allows you to run, have compute run effectively in these environments. Connectivity, how do you make sure that, connect, uh, that the compute that you have deployed in these stores, for example, or on the factory floors is actually connected? And if it is not connected, giving you visibility and ways to address that. Observability, obviously. Security, not just from an IT perspective, but also from an OT perspective. So it is critical, right, that we don't limit ourselves to IT protocols and IT environments. We have to also understand how the OT protocols, Profinet, Modbus, all these protocols bring risks with them. And finally, storage, right? How do you bring storage into these environments which are very constrained and very difficult uh, to put new hardware in? So let me uh, stop here and let me shift gears and uh, request Anand to come onto the stage and share with you um, what we're doing and what are some of the new things that are happening. And then we'll close out with some final thoughts. Great. Excellent. Thanks, Sadat. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about product and technology and get a bit more into detail of where we are today and how the product is going to be evolving from here. What are the areas that, that we're looking to expand upon? So first things first, I wanted to level set. So Sadat introduced some of the unique challenges of the edge. And from an orchestration and management standpoint, that's absolutely the case. And so what you see here is the edge compute stack architecture alongside with the VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator, which is the unified platform for management and orchestration. And so what this looks like um, at the bottom of this picture over here are the hosts at the edge, edge site. They contain a virtualization layer, of course, which is ESXi, and they contain a, a Kubernetes layer as well for deployment of VM-based applications as well as Kubernetes-based applications. But the key difference between the edge version of this and the data center version of this is that in the edge version, everything is pulled from the host. It's a distributed system. The host is responsible for pulling everything, whereas in a data center deployment, you have one central point, like a vCenter as an example, which pushes configuration to all of the different hosts. And so in an edge environment, this host over here, these hosts that are deployed at each of the edge sites, they automatically call back home to the VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator up here in the cloud, whoops, over there. And they authenticate, they zero touch provision, they get their infrastructure configuration, configuration of what kind of application, or first actually, they get associated with a Git repository where the desired state for the, those particular hosts are defined. And that desired state includes infrastructure configuration, um, VM application-based configuration, or like which VM applications are configured, and uh, Kubernetes-based application configuration as well. And the hosts are then responsible for pulling that automatically from the Git repository, configuring itself, and then pulling the content as well from the content repositories. And these are customer Git repos and content repositories. They can be deployed anywhere. The hosts do it themselves, and the system works that way. And obviously, with the unique challenges of the edge, this makes it more scalable and also fits in with a model where the edge can be deployed anywhere, behind a private network, in a store, next to a windmill, anything like that. So that's, that's, what we're, that's the overall product. And what I wanted to do is actually show a quick demo of it. So if you can switch the, the screen over to that, or I guess I can do it. Oh, there it is, perfect. So I figured I'd do it live. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, but basically, the product is here, the VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator, ecs.orchestrator.vmware.com. And what you're looking at here 
is a very simple uh, se setup where the first page has the ability to download the image. So the image for edge compute, think about it as it's a vanilla image. So we're trying to manage and orchestrate hosts at the edge more like appliances. So more like what you're used to with your wireless router at home, for example. Right? So it's a vanilla image. This can be installed by a system integrator, or you can directly install it yourself on the host. You download it from here, or it gets installed. And basically, that host now has the image, and once it's plugged in, if it has DHCP at the site, it's able to automatically call home. And when it calls home, calls back to the cloud, the first construct we introduce is a site. Whoops, uh-oh. <laughs> One second, oops, sorry, just give me, <laughs> this is always the danger in doing things live, <laughs> that uh, things can mess up like this, just give me one second. But so what I was going to talk about uh, as, I, as I bring this back up is the concept of a physical site. So this is a location, um, it's a location, and the idea is, you know, obviously as Sadat mentioned, you're going from a single location, which is a data center, to thousands of locations potentially um, that, that are in, in geographically distributed areas. And when you do that, you need constructs for this in order to maintain it. You want to look at this on a map. You want to um, identify this with different labels, for example. Whoops, all right, we're back up. So what I was saying, so sites, right? And you know, as I was saying, so the first construct, you can add a site, right? Sort of define the physical location of it. You can associate a Git repository, which has the desired state for all of the hosts in that site, for example, or you can override that at a host level as well. You can associate labels to a site. So for instance, some sites in a retail environment might be stores, others may be distribution centers, uh, and so on and so on. You can apply those kind of labels, which then you can use in your desired state afterwards. Then the next concept is the Git repository. This is what holds that infrastructure configuration. It holds the... VM applications that you want to deploy, as well as uh, holding the, con uh, the Kubernetes applications. And we try and keep this very simple. So here's an example of what a Git repo looks like for a single site. It's just a single directory, right? Um, manifests for your infrastructure configuration, manifests for different Kubernetes applications, manifests for VM-based applications. Now you can expand this, it's very flexible. So you can have different directories for sites. You can use customizations to customize different configurations on a site-by-site -site basis or on a host-by-host -host basis as well. But the idea that we're trying, or the, the goal for us, is to make this as simple and straightforward and utilize infrastructure as code as, as much as possible in this. So that's, that's sites, Git repositories, and then we get to hosts. So what we've done here is, if you want to add a host, what you would do is you would pre-configure your host and configure your make, model, and serial number or some additional authentication as well. You would pre-configure that. You can do that individually or you can do that in bulk. And basically when the edge host comes back up and calls home, it automatically matches itself up, gets authenticated. You can activate that host. And once you activate it, that host gets all this configuration from the Git repository, gets the content from the content repository, and away you go. It's all set up that way. So the goal for us is really, again, to keep this as simple as possible and manage the edge in sort of a fundamentally different way than what you're used to in, in the data center because of the requirements of the edge. And then the last thing I'll just call out is sort of there's the notion of grouping. Again, we try to make this flexible. You can group different hosts and label them, you know, as this host has like an AI or like has a GPU as an example or something else. Um, there's monitoring embedded into the product as well to mean to get events, to help troubleshoot and so on. But that's the idea and it's, it's uh, available for um, the management and orchestration of single hosts at the edge. So what I want to do next, so that was just a quick demo, and hopefully it also broke the monotony of uh, slideware that you, that you would have seen. Uh, so I want to switch back to the PowerPoint now. Um, so perfect. Oops. All right, so next what I want to talk about is where are we going with this and how are we evolving the product? And we're evolving it in many different areas. Um, the first one is the development of multi-node multi Kubernetes. 
as well as multi-host vSphere clustering at the edge. And again, made, managed in this super simple way that I just showed you. Um, the second area is edge hardware support. So obviously, the types of hardware you see at the edge are different from those that you see in the data center. And we want to be able to certify and put them on a compatibility list in the same way that you're used to. Uh, On-premise is the next area where today the product that I just showed you is in the cloud, is in the public cloud. And we'll be looking to have an on-premise version that can sit in a private data center, um, depending on the application. The fourth area is a tighter integration with our Velo Cloud SD-WAN. And the key goal here is because most edge deployments are connecting back to the cloud or other uh, services over a wide area network link, a tight integration of those mission critical applications with the router or the SD-WAN router that's going to be able to optimize application traffic over that wide area network is quite key. And so obviously the system will work with any SD-WAN or any WAN routing system, but would like to differentiate and add extra uh, capabilities with VeloCloud SD-WAN. The fifth area and the sixth area are edge security and edge AI, and I'll get into a bunch of these um, in, in more detail next. So the first is multi-node Kubernetes and vSphere clusters. And so there are two main deployment types that we target at the edge. The first one is no vSphere clustering, um, but multi-node Kubernetes clustering. And so what that looks like from an architecture standpoint is you have, you know, different multiple hosts, obviously. You can still deploy VMs on top. You're just not deploying it on a vSphere cluster, per se. But we also have uh, a resilient Kubernetes control plane and the ability to deploy Kubernetes-based applications on a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, or clusters as well, that support. And where you would target this first deployment is in a scenario where you have a very low set of resources, for instance. So think boxes with like less than 32 gigs of RAM, for example, or 16 gigs of RAM, something like that. Um, and cases where, you know, you can either do d data resiliency at an application layer by deploying distributed or clustered databases, or maybe you have some other solution for shared storage, for example. Right, so that's deployment number one and scenario number one. Deployment number two is adds in vSphere clustering. So architecturally what this looks like is very similar, except it introduces two new things. One is a local vSphere control plane, right, that, or cluster control plane. And it introduces all of the vSphere cluster services that you're used to, you know, distributed switch, vSAN, and all the rest, HA, all the rest of it. Um, now, this type of deployment is going to require larger resources. So think boxes that are at least 64 gigs, maybe 128 gigs and beyond to support. But obviously, that's because a bunch of these great services come with <laughs> some, some overhead requirements as well. And, but you get everything. You get all the benefits uh, of vSphere clustering as well as Kubernetes clustering as well. But the key thing, again, is that both of these deployments, you can define upfront what those deployments are in the UI or in desired state, and then it automatically um, gets manifested in that way and managed in the, same, in the same way. And we have customers, for instance, that actually have both of these deployments within the same type of customer. So in retail, right, we have a customer that has 5,000, around 5,000 sites. 3,000 of their stores are small stores, like really, really tiny ones, where they just deploy a single host. So obviously no, no clustering there. Um, and then the remaining sites have three node or three host vSphere clusters, right? We have manufacturing customers which, you know, deploy who or who deploy programmable logic controllers in a cluster in a vSphere clustered environment, for example. They virtualize it and deploy it that way. But then their industrial PCs that sit on the on the on the line themselves, those are single hosts and managed that way. So again, the key thing being managed uh, in a unified manner. So the next aspect of it is edge hardware support. So, you know, stuff that's already, so I mean, what this looks like sort of is what edge hardware looks like in some sense. There's some of these things like the Lenovo and Dell systems over here that are already on the hardware compatibility list. So they're already set. But what we're looking to do is add support for some of the more bespoke hardware that you get at the edge. 
So an example here is we've certified recently the Siemens BX39A, right, um, for specific manufacturing style use cases that we see that in. Um, and then the Contron box is something that we're in the process of certifying. But the basic idea here is that this would be done on a customer demand basis, right? So as customers have certain requirements on specific hardware that needs to be used to solve their particular use case, that's what we would be working with the customer and the partner to help, uh, to help get certified and be able to be um, managed in the same way. Next, um, you know, what would a presentation be without some edge AI discussion? And so what is Edge Compute Stack and VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator doing to simplify the deployment of Edge AI? And so, you know, one, one way to look at this is in sort of four buckets, where one of the first challenges of deploying AI at the edge is identifying all the manual steps involved in identifying where the hardware acceleration is, passing that hardware acceleration through to a worker node, and then tying that into a container, installation of all the different drivers that are needed to support it, and so on and so on. And so there's a lot of manual steps there, and that's one of the areas that we're focusing on making simple. The next part of that is once you've done that, deploying the application itself, where in some cases you deploy the application and the model together, that's probably the most common deployment of an, of an AI app, but you can also do it separately. And again, if you do it separately where the model is separate from the AI or from the application, what does that look like? How do we, how do we um, optimize that? And then the third is model, like actually moder monitoring the model for things like model drift and data drift and so on. And finally, security. So where I'll probably spend the most time here is first talking about the first, the first step where we can, where we can help optimize. And so diving into that, you know, all these steps at the top here are manual steps that have to happen today. So identifying the hardware for different hosts, um, you know, actually setting up the, the Kubernetes container, the drivers, the vendor plugins, like from NVIDIA and, and folks like that, right? And then finally actually deploying the application itself. What we're looking to do here in ECS is automate a lot of that. So the first part of it is automated detection of the hardware, attaching a profile and a label to the different devices, right, that have the hardware. The next steps, because we automatically instantiate a Kubernetes cluster for you and VM, uh, VM cluster as well, we can pre-build those worker nodes to include all of the, all of the necessary ingredients to be able to enable that hardware acceleration. We can automatically pass it through and sort of have that ready to be used. And then finally, it's all GitOps and desired state based. So the idea for you to be able to use that hardware acceleration and deploy this would just be to add some extra lines in the desired state to say that this AI-based application or this Kubernetes app is an AI app and requires X and Y, and then we'll take care of the rest. We'll deploy to the right host, attach it to the right set of um, resources, and have it work automatically. So we think that this is probably you know, the, the lowest hanging fruit for helping optimize and helping um, deploy Edge AI. Beyond this, as I said, sort of application deployments, right? This is probably the most common one where it's an app plus model. And there is just sort of the, the deployment that I talked about earlier. Going forward, we're seeing some people look into this kind of a model where the model itself is deployed separately. It's pulling updates and sort of maintaining itself in communication with the model server. And the app with its business logic is separated, but obviously they need to be plumbed together. And so in either of these cases, we'll have the ability to sort of automate and um, optimize the deployment of these, these scenarios. So with that, um, the last topic I want to talk about is security. Um, and so sort of, these are five areas of security that, that I wanted to touch on that um, you know, we, we think we have a unique value to bring aboard or to bring to bear. So the first is onboarding. Obviously, you know, you're deploying an edge or a host at the edge, right? There's the physical security and things like that are different. Um, additionally, we're not asking for any firewall holes or anything like that. It's all outbound communication from the edge. That's a key aspect of it. And we have methods of authentication, which are secure as well, and the cloud is secure. 
The second aspect of it is SASE, or Secure Access Services Edge. So these are WAN-based security services that can protect the traffic of the edge host that is communicating potentially over an insecure network, like a, a broadband network. Right? The, the third is the ability to rapidly deploy patches. So because it's GitOps, desired state, fleet management, um, labeling, all of that sort of built in, if there's a security incident, it's a matter of updating the desired state, and the updates can go out to all the different hosts quite quickly. The fourth is post-incident restoration. So again, because it's desired state, it's very easy to go back to sort of your previous good state. Uh, because you have VM-based deployments, you can also snapshot and backup v VMs, bring them back uh, in that way as well. And then finally, the cloud is secure, obviously, and there's role-based access to control exactly who gets to access what in, uh, in the system. So I think that that covers sort of some of the, the topics I wanted to talk about um, and would love to talk to you um, after this uh, if you guys want more detail. But with that, I'll hand back to uh, Mr. Sada. Great job. Thank you, Anand. Um, all right, folks, so let me uh, wrap up here. So we talked uh, today about, right, like, uh, the massive focus that a lot of the businesses that we work with are starting to put on edge. It used to be on the data center, it used to be on the cloud, it's squarely on edge now. It's red hot as an area, and most of you, right, in some way, shape, or fashion would have to engage with these folks who are trying to make edge the, uh, the next battleground. So um, with edge compute stack, what we are doing is that we are providing a platform to our customers which allows them to focus on their business. So if you're a retailer, Edge Compute Stack would allow you to focus on the business of running your stores, as opposed to worrying constantly about how I'm gonna deploy the applications, how I'm gonna run them, how I'm gonna secure them, and what am I gonna do with this AI wave that is coming, right? So we take that pain away, and we bring to our customers a way of doing all of this in a way which is pain-free, and seamless. So that's uh, my message to you. That's where I want to stop. Um, we are looking forward to working with new customers who are interested in this area, and we are here to answer any questions that you may have. So let me open up the floor to questions. Any questions? Yes, there's a question here. Yes, you will be able to schedule patches. You'll be able to schedule things like downtime or maintenance windows and things like that, because obviously at different sites with different time zones, <laughs> you want to do that and not do it like in the middle of the, the day or during Christmas or something like that. Yeah, for yes, sure. Sir. It, we are working on those kind of integrations. Today, this is a separate uh, a platform, which is the, Vela, the VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator. And that's how you manage it. But we are sort of in the process of dis discussing sort of how we eventually integrate with some of the, the aspects of VCF as well. Yeah, so ultimately, uh, our customers, right, who are looking for a single pane of glass, we would have the ability for them to see in the vCenter environment what's going on in their edges as well through integration with ARIA. Um, so that's something that uh, we, we are aware of. Uh, a lot of our customers uh, are their headaches at the edge are so significant that they don't want to worry about that single pane of glass. They just want to figure out how to run their edges more effectively. <coughs> we are aware that there are customers who want both. So, more questions? Yes, sir. For the on-prem, got it, got it, got it. Um, so for the first question, uh, yes, there are integrations with VR ops or ARIA operations, right? Um, so yeah, there absolutely are. Um, and so like the system basically can can stream data out to ARIA ops and sort of um, have you, you can have visualizations within that. It, it's included, included. Yep. Yeah. So one of the things uh, um, I want to mention here, right, that obviously there is the aspect of this new platform, the technology that it brings to the table. But we are uh, cognizant of the fact that uh, the pricing and the financials uh, work differently at the edge as opposed to how they work in the data center. It's a different environment with different uh, uh, business and financial metrics. So we have done the pricing in a way which makes sense uh, 
to our customers at the edge in retail stores, uh, uh, factories and such as well. So this uh, issue of licensing, we have addressed that as well. So they have that capability. Yeah. And then your second question was timeline on on-premise. So that's something we're starting to take up now to bring our cloud solution into on-premise. So we're looking, I mean, Q4, Q1, those are the kinds of timeframes that we're looking at. No, we don't have an integration with VRA today, right? So, yeah. Got it. Did you get that question? So you want to take? Yeah. That? So your question is: the edge license will it be uh, usable in the data center? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the licensing for edge is specific for edge environments. Right, so uh, it's uh, it's different pricing. It's better pricing because of the way edge uh, finances work. Uh, so they're not usable uh, in the data center, but we can certainly look at specific scenarios to figure out right that our customers are not overpaying uh, in these situations. So we're happy to look at the specific circumstance and figure it out. Other questions? Go for yes. it. Yes. Yep. Um, Can you sorry, a little bit louder, sorry. <laughs> you mentioned there is no research in the future. So how are you going to put cloud and very specific integrations into that cloud? How are we, sorry, missed the last part. Um, oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So in the clustered scenario at the edge, there is sort of a headless cluster control, right? Uh, sort of like a, a headless vCenter, you could say, right? That's managing the cluster, right? You like, Basically, it's one of these things that's completely managed through Veco, so you would never log into it or anything like that. But we would expose certain vCenter style features via that, via the desired state interface or via the UI in that way. So, what's that? Yeah, through the orchestrator. Exactly. 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 So we would be able to support those kind of, those kind of features, right? In, for, for that scenario. It's just that, you know, it's completely, self-contained within the edge. So it's not like a typical, you know, deploy a vCenter in the data center and manage this thing from the data center into the edge sites. It's basically embedded within the solution is sort of this cluster control, but it enables all of those different features that, um, that you're used to with, with vSphere clustering. Yeah, everything is through the orchestrator, orchestrator and desired state and, and GitOps, basically. That's, that's how we want to model the system. So you're not logging into a box directly. You're not logging into a vCenter directly. You're not doing things sort of that, that traditional way. It's just the orchestrator layer, right? Which again is either cloud or on premise, right? Going, uh, going forward. And then it's desired state. So adding new desired state into your Git repository. And, and that's how you would manage it. All right, folks, thank you very much. We'll stay back if there are questions, further questions. Um, we're very excited about uh, the product Edge Compute Stack. Please do tell your colleagues. We have massive uptake with our customer base, and we would like to, uh, to keep that growing. Please do take your service as well. Very grateful for everybody joining here. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Take care.